Hello, friends. Happy Thursday. I'm not going to apologize anymore. I just forgot to make a video yesterday on Wednesday, so... I am sharing with you today in my uh, Briar Spirit Pipe. Common, commonly smoked on Thursdays. I am sharing what is very close to my last bowl of Haunted Bookshop. I got here the big tub of Haunted Bookshop, and as you can see, it is pretty darn close to empty. I probably have two to three bowls left. Now, I talked about this last week, and folks started making all kinds of helpful suggestions, and I appreciate them, you know, but I know I can get tins. I'm not going to buy tins. You know, in my opinion, an 8-ounce tin costs almost as much as a pound in bulk, and that's just a waste of money from, from where I sit. If you like your tobacco in tins and you want to buy it that way, that's fine, but, you know, the amount I smoke, I just can't justify paying that amount for tins. I know that some places other than smoking pipes have it in stock. I like to buy from smoking pipes, so I'm not going to do that. And yes, I do have a lot of haunted bookshop in my cellar, but I have a rule, which is that's for when I retire, and I'm not going to touch it. And, you know, that's a, a rule I'm not going to break. I, I joke a lot about how I buy these bags, and they very seldom make it into jars and all that. But once it gets into a jar, that's it. It doesn't get touched until I'm retired and that's what I'm smoking. So, you know, that's just me. That's my rule. That's how I live. And I'll get my... I gotta get a different tamper. Excuse me. Where is it? There we go. I actually packed this a little too tight. When you get towards the bottom of the tub, it, it's, it's a lot of finer uh, flakes that have broken up and stuff and Sometimes it packs a little too tight. I think that's better. I where to put my lighter. So it'll be back soon enough, and when it comes back, I'm hoping it comes back with Pegasus. And I'm going to order a pound of Pegasus and a couple of pounds of Haunted Bookshop, and that'll keep me happy for a while. Pegasus, I'm I'm now using it as a Carter Hall replacement, and I'm just going to buy a pound. I only smoke one bowl a day, not even every day, so that'll last me a really long time. This, by the way, is only my second bowl of Honda Bookshop today, so it's fine. I got a lot of other stuff to smoke, a lot. You know, I'm not in any way hurting for tobacco. In fact, I'm going to show you some new tobacco that I've got here. And I want to give you a little background. It's kind of a box opening. There's a box. It's already opened. So, you might recall uh, a couple of weeks ago, I showed off a custom built that I was working on that had some horse heads on it. And I had never seen a custom built with anything carved in it before. My friend Jack Kurtz got in touch with me and he said, you know, I really love that uh, horse head pipe and I would love to get one with a dog on it. Now Jack is, uh, I've told you about Jack before, uh, he's a great guy. He's uh, in his, I'm sorry, Jack, if I got this wrong, but I think he's in his 70s. Uh, he's had a few strokes, so he's, you know, got difficulties getting around and all that, but he loves his pipes. And the other thing that Jack loves dearly are spaniels. And he raised spaniels. He, he talks to me about them very often. Jack is a dog lover. And he said he would love to get a custom built with a dog on it, and he's been looking for one. So I mentioned that in a video. And I very quickly, uh, you know, within a day, I think, got an email from our buddy Doug Owen uh, from the cargo hold. And Doug said that he just happened to have a pipe with a dog on it. Now, 
I had only mentioned that Jack was looking for a pipe with a dog on it. I hadn't said anything about spaniels. And Doug said that he raised spaniels and he picked it up because the dog was a spaniel and he thought it would be neat to have, but he never smoked it. And he offered it uh, for me to, to get for Jack. And, uh, you know, I told Jack about it. Jack was really excited. I went back to Doug and I, you know, I, t I told him about Jack and I told him how excited he was. And I said, you know, how much do you want for the pipe? And Doug being the, the incredibly generous guy that he is, he just said, I'll send it to you. And let me show you this. I need to do some work on it, but this is the pipe. And hopefully you can see that beautiful carved dog there. I think it's a Spaniel. Doug said he wasn't too sure. Um, you know, hopefully it's close enough, Jack. <laughs> but it is remarkable that this pipe was was sitting there in Doug's collection. Doug had never smoked it. And he didn't even know that Jack was interested in Spaniels. And, you know, so soon this is going to be in the hands of, of somebody that will really love it and will enjoy smoking it greatly. I need to do a bit of work on it. I'm actually going to do this as a uh, as a video series. I think both Jack and Doug will enjoy that. Uh, just clean it up. It, it's in very good shape. There's a little bit of uh, dings on the stem. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Might have to do a little bit of patching, but we'll be able to get this stem uh, in good shape and uh, fits well. Yeah, everything else is in great order, so it's clean. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll ream it and clean it and all that stuff, and I'll polish up the outside, but it's in very, very good shape. So, this will be going to my friend Jack Kurtz, and Doug, thank you very much, and I've talked to Jack about it, and Jack sends his thanks as well. We, we really appreciate it. And again, I'll be having a video series on that in the in the near future, if I don't throw it on the ground as I'm trying to put it away. Now, I think that was incredibly generous of Doug, and uh, I certainly wasn't expecting to see anything but the pipe, but of course, Doug had to go above and beyond, and he sent me some tobacco. And it's, uh, it's all cargo hold tobacco, and I'll share these with you. Um, this one is called Cumbria Flake, and hopefully you can see through the bag. Very nice, sort of loose flake. Uh, this one is called Olympic Mountaineer. There's the label. And very nice dark flakes. I have tried all of these, uh, and I'll tell you about them in a minute. And this one is called Sailor's Rope, and you can see it's a very nice uh, brown rope tobacco. Uh, so I've had exactly one bowl of each of these. And I can say, uh, and Doug will probably tell me that I'm wildly wrong about this, but based on the smell and the taste, these definitely have a... Uh, goodly proportion of dark fire Kentucky in them. Um, very nice, very, really, really good quality tobacco and, and, the, and the flavor is fantastic. Uh, so Doug, I'm really, really happy for these and uh, you know, I'm going to enjoy them greatly. So thank you. It was very generous of you. Um, it's, it's just kind of funny to get these tobaccos and not be able to look them up because the uh, yes, I don't even know what the components are, but they're delicious. Every, all three of them. The rope took a little bit of drying time. The flakes, I just, I just rubbed out and, and put them in the pipe. You know, didn't overpack it, and they smoked fine. The, the rope, I, I cut off a couple slices, rubbed it out, and waited about 10 minutes to impact it. And uh, again, perfect. Smoked straight through the bowl. So like I was saying, don't feel bad for me when the haunted bookshop is gone. I've got plenty, to, <laughs> plenty of tobacco, more more than my fair share, to be honest.
it's just every day I'm just amazed at the generosity and kindness of, of pipe smokers, folks in the in this community, but pipe smokers in general. And I still don't know if it's something that the pipe brings to us or if it's something that we bring to the pipe, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's just true. That's all that matters. So I've got a couple other pipes on the bench. I'm actually finishing up a uh, video series. It probably won't post until for another couple weeks because i got to do video editing, but it's a pipe that I've been working on for uh, my friend, our friend, Johnny Ford. And uh, Johnny, it's it's nearly done. So I'm pretty excited about that one. And it's it's going to be a fun video. It's a kind of a challenging, challenging restoration job. And you'll you'll see what I mean. And I got, uh, I think, two other pipes that I'm working on right now. And the, the list is moving along. Uh, I've stopped taking new orders because I just was starting to feel a little overwhelmed having 30 people waiting in line. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I'll get that list down, and then we'll see what happens. I, I don't know what the next stage, is, next step is going to be yet, but we'll see. So it is Thursday, so tomorrow night is Virtual Pipe Club, and we will have a Virtual Pipe Club with just me. And I hope you join us. We always have a good time with that. We'll smoke some tobaccos. Maybe I'll smoke some of these uh, Karkahold blends and we can talk about those. Uh, have a drink or three and we'll just have a big, big old time. So hope to see you there Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's about it for today, guys. So I'm going to get back to work before I get, uh, get in trouble. And... Finish up my probably last bowl of haunted bookshop for the day and move on to something else and hopefully have a relaxing evening ahead. Hope you're having a great week. Looking forward to the weekend. I hope to see you on Friday night and uh, wish you all the best. Till we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.